Welcome to Illuminate. My name is Mark Coltharp and I am the Chief Revenue Officer here at Ziston. We co-founded this company back in 2016. We've had a great ride and we've done some great projects around the globe. Today, I'm here to give you a case history of a recent project we worked on. And I've been working in the cybersecurity business now for 16 years globally. And this is a great story. The use case is going to be why a global AI company migrated from Splunk to Sumo Logic. So to start off with, I want to give you a background and sort of set the stage. This customer's industry is uh, artificial intelligence and data analytics. Anytime you talk about data analytics, the first thing that comes to mind is large volumes of data and security telemetry. Again, being a global company, global companies have the tendency to use shared SOC services or what we called co-mingled global data centers, right, and SOX. So what we do is we see all these different portfolio companies in this large organization sharing this data center in the SOC where they're providing security for multiple businesses. So you have different types of risk postures, different types of risk profiles, right? So this is a shared service environment. Then also the data realm in which they work was healthcare data. So their high value targets was healthcare data along with them being a hybrid Splunk ES shop. Now the hybrid means they had both on-prem and cloud-based solutions. So kind of starting with the end in mind, what we want to do is talk about the desired outcome the customer is looking for and what our success blueprint was. The customer wanted to come on and carve out this healthcare data and the security operations around that healthcare data from that large enterprise environment and create a specific environment for this data. The window of opportunity was only 60 days. And I don't know how many of you out there have built SOCs or deployed SIMs, but 60 days is a really short window. What we're traditionally used to seeing is that three, six or 12 month window to actually roll out a SOC and a SIM. Now, they also want to take a look at their current staffing and do they outsource a SOC or do they keep it in house? Along with just evaluating some managed security service providers out on the market, and then to evaluate the SIM security analytics platform. Now, when you're evaluating the security analytics platform, a couple of things come to mind. And the first one is security economics. A function of data ingest is how much it costs to run a SIM. And the problem CISOs have these days with planning out their SIMs is their budget constraints how much data they can actually take into this platform. So you're always fighting trying to bring as much telemetry in as you can, but your budget always limits it based on the amount of data you ingest. The customer also wanted to see if they could leverage a modern architecture that allowed them to scale for a minimum growth 150% year over year. That would also allow them some more investment forecasting on how they want to invest on ingest and make the supply and demand come together and they could budget out quarter after quarter of how much ingest they need to add based on the volumes. And then again, they had the challenge of budget parity with the legacy global enterprise budget from the SOC they just moved from. Also for this blueprint of success, they decided it's gonna be 100% cloud strategy. And when we start planning for cloud, we have three dimensions of planning. First of all, we look at software as a services. The third party platforms that customer is going to use in those clouds, we have to look at what telemetry we can pull into this new SOC and this new SIM. Very typically, the third party SaaSes, they give you really good telemetry on who's accessing the system, what resources are they accessing, and we want to be able to pull that telemetry back into the SIM and the Security Operations Center so we can start looking for standard deviations of behavior and cloud access to where it's not in the control process we had laid out in the uh, security operations. Secondly, infrastructure as a service. All the cloud IIS providers, what they do is they have native security tool stacks that we can pull from their clouds back into the SOC so we can watch workload to workload communications containers if they're cost communicating. So again, bringing that telemetry into the SOC is a major value for us. Along with the customer already has a tool stack they're invested in. We want to maintain their investment and be able to use their firewalls, their server systems, and their endpoint map platforms. Now, 
Lastly, we want to talk about extending visibility into those non-institutionalized technologies. This particular customer had a lot of data coming in from the supervised and unsupervised ML and AI platforms. Again, they also had a large opportunity to look at some unstructured log source telemetry that you normally can't get into certain types of cells. So that was the blueprint. Next, we're gonna talk about what was their journey like. We've talked about what the customer does, what success looks like, and now we're gonna roll into their journey. So the customers decided to go out and look at a couple different managed security service partners on this space. First of all, they looked at a big four managed security service. They also looked at a global managed security service provider, and they looked at a specialty boutique MSS, which was Zistin. On the SIM platform side, they stopped and they remember their incumbent was Splunk, so they looked at Splunk Cloud, IBM Q Radar, and Q Radar in the cloud, and then Sumo Logic CSE. So what were the results? The results was the customer wanted to go and carve out both the SOC and the SIM. They used Zistin's 24 by 7, 365 managed service system with Cybercast as the platform, and they selected Sumo Logic CSE as their SIM of choice. Now, they used a co-managed model, which means the customer has access to the same thing the SOC does. So they have full access to the logs, to the dashboards of the Sumo Logic platform. They also used some existing security staff augmentation for 36 months over the course of the contract. Because a lot of time when you go to an outsourced MSSP, the customers feel like they have more workload created for their own team internally, just because the fidelity of the alerts coming over and they want to have to remediate. So Zistin provides additional SOC augmentation uh, to help get all the, everything addressed from a remediation standpoint. Now, the SOC they went to was 100% cloud SOC, nothing on-prem, nothing on-prem at all. So last thing that really focused, we did meet that 60-day window. We went from contract to correlation in 35 days. And think about that. That's a plan of SOC and a SIM in 35 days. A lot of people ask, well, why Sumo Logic? How did you get to that determination? Sumo Logic was chosen for a couple great reasons. And the first one was it brings a rapid time to value. We did this project in 35 days. Sumo Logic was written and developed in the cloud. So it has a microservices architecture, which allows us to improve the performance, have cloud native API integrations to third party platforms. It has the multi tenancy capability, which allows Zistin to go out and take a look at anonymized data from the global instances of all Sumo and bring that threat intel back into this customer's environment and have a real time threat intelligence feed from the global Sumo instances across the board. Lastly, it gives us additional cloud visibility into the infrastructure as a service. Again, those native tools in the infrastructure as a service platforms that we all know the native tools they provide. But when you think about some of the competitive situations in the platforms we evaluated against, a lot of those platforms were actually on-prem platforms that were calibrated and virtualized and put up into the cloud and then call themselves a cloud solution. Now, another thing outside the cloud native advantages was the extended log source visibility and the ability to onboard these log sources. So first of all, we had traditional log source integration. That's all your firewalls, your endpoints in the log flow, everything was nice and easy to integrate there. But then we had the ability using CSC to bring in this normalized log sources, which makes it really quick and easy to get log sources up to write correlation rules and to bring them into the dashboarding and alerting. And then Sumo also provides us the capability of bringing in this non-institutionalized log sources uh, that are unstructured, which is a major advantage when you want to start looking at platforms that aren't institutionalized. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Well, I'll give you one example. We have a customer that wanted to look, take a look at telemetry coming from a propulsion navigation platform. Well, there are no easy ways to get that data in, and there's no parsers custom developed for that. Sumo Logic gives us the flexibility to bring in those unstructured log sources. But one of the main things that really had a huge impact, and not an impact from the CISO's perspective, but more along the lines from the budgeting, the CFO's perspective, and Sumo Logic gave us the ability through their data tiering platform to bring in 25% more data versus their competitive solutions. And the way they do that is through their data tiering. We can bring all the data in we need that's going to be used for the correlation plane and bring that in. 
Now, for other data that we want in for regulatory compliance, for forensics, we can bring in to what we call the infrequent tier for Sumo Logic, and it costs much less to bring it in and store it there. And you don't have all the overhead of unthawing logs and moving them around like some of the other platforms. So lastly, I'm just gonna to touch on the pre-sales engineering support from Sumo Logic on this platform. In this particular customer case, uh, really accelerated our time to value. So a lot of people will say, hey Mark, how does Ziston get involved and what did you guys bring to the table? So let's talk about that. Ziston created an MSSP that's a little bit different. We wanted to take a different approach to the market. We wanted to take from an operational model, how we work with our customers, we wanted to take an in-house model. And what that means is an in-house model, we're trying to act and be just like we are the customer SOC. We want to communicate with them just like you would if we were in your basement as a SOC. So communication at, at, at Ziston happens through real people. So your security people talk to our security people. You don't have to rely on a portal. You don't have to communicate via tickets or a client advocate. You can have your team, our customer, talking to the Ziston SOC advisory consultants along with the analyst, right? So again, it's that real-time people-to-people like it would be if it was an in-house model. We also provide a full-time dedicated resource called a, called a client program manager. And this client program manager, it's actually someone that's brought on to help bring the business context from the customer into the Zistin's managed security model. So we understand the business, the assets, the resources, change control windows, and everything that goes around in a streamlined SOC. So we also have what we call Beyond Alert, it's our tagline. But what that means is when customers get alerts from us, they get a complete root cause of why that alert came over to them. With every alert and ticket we send over, we also bring a recommendation and changes in people, process, or technology. We call that Delta PPT because every ticket is an opportunity to actually improve the maturity of your program. And if we can make a change in a people, process, and technology, we don't have to keep seeing the same tickets come in over and over and over, right? And one other thing that we found that we wanted to change in the market We've seen some socks that send tickets over to their customers and up to 60% of the tickets they send their customers never get closed out. And at 60%, that's a poor ROI on your investment with your third party sock if you have 60% of tickets unclosed. So we aim to make sure our customers get to 100% escalation ticket remediation. All right, and a couple other things, Zistin's vendor agnostic. We don't tell you what kind of hardware you need to buy. We maintain and protect your current investments. There's no proprietary black boxes. We have workshops to help understand customers' business context. And then security engineering. How are we going to not install this platform, but engineer this platform into your business? We work from the MITRE framework. We have over 950 use cases to start with, and we have the ability to actually create custom content for any of your log sources. And then again, one of our themes was having the ability to go from contract to correlation in 30 to 45 days. Now, some, some parting thoughts on this uh, case study. You know, I'm just gonna say a lot of times these case studies, they're always kind of a, a, a marketing of how great a technology is or how great a service provider is. But I'm gonna tell you this success was really a teamwork. It was a triad of successes from the customer, from Sumo, and from Ziston. You know, customer took the time to provide us good detailed blueprints of what they thought success should look like. Sumo provided the tool, the tool to help deliver that. And Ziston was the carpenter. Ziston provided the labor to make the Sumo run and meet the customer's blueprint of success. I'll tell you though, I still think the customer was the center of the success. If you're out there and you have these types of projects, if you can kind of emulate some of these things, the customer's leadership really empowered their internal team and they empowered the Ziston team from the start. And when you look, the customer had a 60 day time span. Um, they did something unique. The customer slowed down to actually speed up. And let me tell you what I mean by that. The customer challenged the current state and the status quo. No options were off the table. All options were open. They listened to everything people brought to the table. There were no preconceptions brought to this project. And most of all, the customer went to great lengths to provide details, details on the roadmap, the blueprint, 
because the details matter. And that's how you install and engineer success. So I'll just say from start to finish, the customer empowered us and to go beyond a vendor and become an advisor on this project. And the results speak for themselves. Well, I just want to thank you for your time and listening today. And I look forward to meeting each and every one of you.